pleased to be joined by president of baseball ops for the Seattle Mariners, Jerry DePoto. Jerry, we appreciate the time. For, for those of us that aren't, it, aren't from the area, weren't there, uh, your team's run last season, what did it mean for the city, for the fan base, and more importantly, the organization? Uh, probably enough that we should have had trumpets uh, announcing our arrival, <laughs> like like, uh, like Sugar D does. But I think uh, it was phenomenal the the ride that our team had, and you know the fun through the postseason. But most especially the way our fans engaged, the way they started pouring into the ballpark, especially in the second half. And it was never more evident how much this meant to the city of Seattle than in the the 18 inning game we played with Houston, when virtually no one left, and it was. It was just an awesome time, and we felt it throughout this offseason with our group, too. Hey, Jerry, it's Dan. I'll tell you what. I know you're not afraid to try to shake the roster up and make a trade, but when you acquired Luis Castillo, did you, after that phone call when you hop, you just were like, yes, I got the guy that I wanted? <laughs> There's a, I, I will say it was one of those moments we were going into the, the deadline and and obviously he was our, our target and you know we went through some ups and downs days where we thought we were going to land him and others where we thought we were going to miss and that was one of those moments when we landed him where there was a lot of high fives going around like we just made a difference making move and and after we got a chance to know Luis and and the 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 the, the way he built our, our team into that postseason and, and how he delivered in those first two starts in, in the postseason, just phenomenal. And I'm very excited to see what he'll do here for a full year and really for the five years at least to come. Jerry, you mentioned earlier, you know, coming off of the vibes and everything that happened that was great last year for your organization, for your team, for the city, for the fans, everything. Uh, what was the plan coming into this offseason? You know, are, are you trying to balance not losing some of that momentum with obviously making upgrades and having to make some changes within that clubhouse? Or, you know, how does that kind of thought process play out for you? And then how did it ultimately play out on that for the team that you have coming into this year? You know, I mean, first and foremost, we wanted to get better. And we knew we needed to fill a couple of voids, especially in right field and at second base. But finding a way to continue to move it forward without disrupting the, the really good culture that has started to develop in our clubhouse and throughout our organization. And the thing we focused on, in addition to adding the, the impact of a Colton Wong and a Teoscar Hernandez to fill our two biggest needs, were to bring in players who were experienced, who had played in postseasons, who had been through the ups and the downs. Because I do think there's a difference between where we've been the last few years trying to get over that 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 hump that ultimately we did last October and the the obvious stresses of coming in under the pressure of trying to repeat or, or now go back for a second time. And with such a young group, we thought having players with that type of experience like an A.J. Pollock or Tommy LaStella, Teo and Colton Wong, it, it was just a big get for us to be able to bring guys in who've been there before. Jerry, you know, it, we're always wondering what it takes to put a pitching staff together, particular rotation. You guys have to be awful proud of your scouting and development when you have guys like Logan Gilbert and George Kirby, guys that you drafted, you developed, that it enables you to go out and bring in guys like Robbie Ray, to bring in Castillo, but you can implement those with some arms that you've developed. Are you guys proud of what you've done developing these, some of these pitchers? Incredibly proud. And, you know, all the credit in the world goes to Pete Woodworth and Trent Blank, Max Wiener and our pitching group. We have done a phenomenal job organizationally of, of helping players who are already talented when they enter the organization of realizing just how good they can be. And, you know, Logan and George are, are great examples of that. The place I think it shows up most for us is in our bullpen. And year after year, the job that this group has done in helping transition players like Paul Sewell, and Andres Munoz, and now Matt Brash, who's a, a, a former starter turn reliever for us now so many impact arms that we've been able to develop in our bullpen and and that's been such a key part of our last two seasons so Jerry uh, look I you know Dan wants to talk about the pitchers I'm going to put it back on the catchers because that's where I like that's who I like to talk about <laughs> you had a guy a very young guy last year Cal Raleigh who showed you a lot especially down the stretch in the playoff run everything he did and and defensively he was phenomenal back there for you can you tell us what it means you know to you for the organization for this team moving forward to have a guy back there who could be a potential you know building block for the long term future. 
You know, we think he is, and we've always thought that. Obviously, Cal grew up in our system. We've had a chance to know him since drafting him out of Florida State. And, you know, last year he left his mark on the history of Seattle baseball, really. I mean, he'll never be forgotten by, by the Mariners fans. And, and we haven't had enough big moments in our history that that doesn't rank up there as one of the, the biggest. Mm. Him clinching, you know, our trip to the postseason with a homer. But most especially what you mentioned, you know, what he does behind the plate, the way he leads our staff, his preparation, his leadership skills. Last year was a real breakout for him, especially in the second half. And really excited to see what he'll do this year, being paired again with Tom Murphy, who's uh, so much of the the intangibles that you look for, you know, in addition to whacking around left-handed pitching, Murph brings so many intangibles and leadership skills to the table. And we're so comfortable with what we have behind the plate right now. Just keeping him healthy is, uh, is critical for us. You know, Jerry, it's Dan again. You guys have developed over the years some of the most iconic everyday players, Alex Rodriguez, Ken Griffey Jr. Julio Rodriguez last year, I know you believed in this guy, got off to a slow start the first couple of months of the season. Is he the player, Jerry, you thought he was going to be? Yeah, I mean, it, it's tough to say that you could dream in your wildest dream that at 21 years old he would do the things that he did or have the potential to continue to grow like we believe he does. But we all thought this was the case. And, you know, he does he does all of what you would like to see a player do on the field. He works his tail off to get better, focuses on the little things, the intricate things, base running and defense, that it's not just about what he does in the batter's box. But the thing I'm proudest of and, and why we wanted to, to, to keep him here roughly for the rest of his career is what he brings otherwise, the way he engages our fan base, the way he believes in our organization and and the way he brings teammates together it just it transcends just his ability on the field and 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 there is still upside in Julio Rodriguez just turned 22 and really no telling how far he can go individually well Jerry we appreciate the time best luck to best of luck to you and your squad in 2023 uh, you're a great team you're a lot of fun to watch and those fans in the Pacific Northwest are definitely passionate and fired up about this coming season thanks for the time